Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. Help keep this content ad-free by supporting us on patreon.com slash archerygeek. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, archerypass.com, for all your traditional archery needs. Hey everyone, welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers. I'm here with Laura Hughes. Uh, she's just recently back from the 3D World Championship in, uh, is it Turin? Turin, Italy, Laura? Turney, yes. Turney, Turney, Italy. Yes. Uh, very cool. Um, thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm excited. I know. It, I'm excited too. <laughs> I'm like, how, first of all, let's get this out of the way. How old are you? I'm 19. 19, yeah. And you finished um, eight in the regular rounds and then in in, in mm-hmm. the in the in the shoot shootouts you came fifth right yes that's it. women's yes. bare bow first i think this is your first adult competition is that correct too well i shot longbow um okay. i shot longbow back in 2014 in france so that was my first this is my first adult bare bow so yeah. um it's i don't know it's very different than longbow <laughs> i enjoyed it though I didn't, I, Hey, I didn't know that. We're going to talk a little bit yeah. about that too. I, I can't wait mm-hmm. to talk about that. Wow. So you've been, how long have you been shooting? I'm going to get to tell eight this. Years. Okay. Yeah. Eight, eight years. Okay. Oh, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut up and I'm going to just have you tell us exactly how you got into archery and what kind of is your uh, origin story? Well, it's not all that. I mean, I know all that unique. My brother wanted to start hunting. Um, I'm not real big into hunting. I've gone, killed a deer, not my thing. Um, respect it but uh he wanted to get into hunting and if you were going to be hunting you probably need to be able to you know know that you're going to kill it so he started going to archery practice I got bored of watching because it was I don't know a long drive so my parents had to take me to so I started shooting (laughs) that's pretty much how I got started okay tell us the rest of it (laughs) so you can yeah yeah there's a ton more there (laughs) there is a lot more that's how I got started keep going keep going so the club that we started at, um, Wolfridge Archery, um, the lady that runs it, uh, we used to shoot uh, Olympic recurve, and she switched over to Bear Bear recently. She got cancer and just couldn't keep up with the Olympic recurve, um, like the rigorous training schedules with all that. And she's older, got retired. Um, so she she shot Bear Bow and kind of introduced us to that. And I absolutely loved it. Switched to recurve for a little less than a year. Um, wasn't really my thing didn't really connect as well. So bare bow has been, has been it played around with longbow. I'm not a big fan of wooden arrows. So I I found my place. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, you just, you just really fit into that, but it sounds like you had some success with longbow. Um, I, that was in France. It was the year that, um, we didn't have very many people show up at the trials because that was our first, um, first like run with it so if you showed up for longbow women you got to go you were so that's how i got in by default. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. yeah. so who is that <laughs> oh that, that's hilarious that's hilarious um but and you didn't you didn't love longbow i wasn't a fan um what longbow i respect it so much my goodness i i could never the it just make a good shot and it just misses for no reason because your arrow's bent or something yeah. It's, I am such a big fan of carbon, could not do wood, <laughs> not my thing. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, you're 19 years old. What do you do now? What are you in school right now, or what do you do? Yeah, um, I'm a senior at UNC Chapel Hill, um, majoring in biology and English, and I'm really excited about being done. <laughs> That's awesome. The, for yeah. 19, you're almost done school. Yeah, I um did a I did like a dual enrollment thing in high school so I could go to college and high school and get credit for both at the same time. So that knocked off two years of college. <laughs> you're like, you're like super smart and you're super good at shooting a bow. That's amazing. That's great. <laughs> that is crazy. Okay. Let's, let's, let's keep going. So, all right. You were, um, how did you from UNC, is that, do they have like a collegiate team or are you, are you, do you have a coach or, or are you, tell us what's going on with that. Um, so UNC does not have, they don't have a collegiate team, not a big fan of, um, hunting and that type of, um, art or anything. (laughs) They're more, more liberal arts. Uh, I'm trying to go to a collegiate national tournament this year. I'm running through some obstacles, but 
trying to get that signed off on. Uh, but right now I, I shoot out of my house, which I live an hour from UNC and I, I commute every day. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have like a 10 target 3d range outside. My dad likes to set up and put things up in trees. So he, he helps me out with that. And I, I get some coaching from George, uh, George Riles out of Snellville, Georgia. Sometimes he uh, does more Olympic and compound stuff, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We, we click, we get together. No, that's really good. That's that's mm -hmm. good. So you, you most of your training and practices at home, and then mm -hmm. you do you do local tournaments or how did you get involved with the U.S. team? Um, so I do I do local tournaments. I I started off um with more indoor stuff, which that kind of is a logical pathway to in, uh, to indoor and to to Lancaster and that type of shooting. So. Uh, from being involved with indoor, I like, oh, the logical next step would be outdoor target. And then I was so far into USA archery that field and 3D came next. So I uh, kind of, my brother also shot. So he was on USAD a few times, the United States archery team. And uh, I don't know, it was, I was already there. Might as well shoot. <laughs> Your whole your whole family's good at archery. That is my that's yeah, my brother's better than I am for sure. <laughs> really, really, really. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Well, I haven't seen him shoot. So is he a Olympic <laughs> freaker? He shoots compound. No. He shoots he, he shoots compound. How do you so, know I mean, if he's better he's than better. you? How do you know he's better <laughs> than? I mean, it doesn't. That is. Do they have like that? Is that on the? Is that actually on the U.S. team? They have a compound. That seems weird. They have the it's like the U.S. <laughs> archery team not the not the olympic team they have compound recurve and bare bow so yeah i know i'm just i'm really just kidding I, i'm just oh I'm, okay i'm not i didn't know how familiar you were with your <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i'm just knocking fun at the compound guys i okay. i love them though i mean they do they do a good job and they they represent us well um in the u.s so i love that too um and so that that's amazing so your parents must be super proud of you they, i don't know they they seem to be. <laughs> they better be. They better be proud of you. I, you, I have a daughter your age, uh, okay. as well. I have a daughter your age as well, and she's in in college. I'm super proud of everything she does. Uh, we'll yeah. talk more about that off, offline. I'll tell you all the stuff that she's doing because I like. To okay. I like to brag. I hear it, this yes. isn't about me. This isn't about <laughs> me. It's about you. Um, so tell us what you're shooting. So you're shooting bare bow. Um, mm -hmm. Who's who's uh, what equipment are you using? I started off with. Um... Well, I first started off with a Martin or Martin Alder. I love that bow. Absolutely. One of my favorite bows I've ever had. It's like a wooden little dinky thing. Yeah. I can still shoot a good score with it. I don't know what is what kind of magic's in that thing. Love it. But then I, I switched to Hoyt because, you know, it doesn't really look normal to show up with a wooden riser to some tournaments. And uh, I don't know, love my Hoyt. And then I switched to CD last year, like a, a year ago today, actually. <laughs> That's great. What is that, a 25? Mm -hmm. 25 light 25 light that's nice what limbs mm -hmm. you shoot i have um yucas yucas okay. i don't know which kind the cheap kind <laughs> that's, that's okay that's okay yeah i don't you're shooting you're shooting world level scores you know you know if you if that, <laughs> that's why i'm asking because people are like okay she shoots world level scores and and i got all this you know my equipment is like you know a thousand times more than than hers and yeah she's so much better than me i'm like so it's not always the equipment right it's 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 the archer um, yeah i don't know find something that works for you i uh, i i have played around with stuff that's more expensive and i just i like what i'm used to so that's what i stick with absolutely what what um what about uh arrows what are you shooting for arrows um, door, I have e oh sorry um well, I shoot the same setup all the time, so <laughs> thanks because I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> um, but I have Eastern Carbon ones, and yeah, they're they're discontinued, so I'm about to have to come up with a new solution. But I've shot these forever, and I love them. <laughs> yeah, they're good, good arrows, good arrows. Um, that's great. And um, do you shoot a tab? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Yes, yeah. yes, tab. <laughs> I love those guys. Um, Me too. Yeah, good. Uh, they have great. They have great equipment. I just did a video uh, with the Yoast tab. I said I don't like people if they don't have Yoast. <laughs> They're not. My, <laughs> can't be my friend if you're not shooting a Yoast tab. Yeah, uh, everybody in Barebow does, or not everybody, but most of them. 
<laughs> a lot of us. Yeah, a lot of us shoot uh, those tabs. Um, okay, so you don't hunt then. You're not hunting anymore or you, you've hunted once and you're like, that's not for me. I don't want to do that. I love sitting in the woods. There's nothing better than that. But I don't, just like the whole having to gut the deer and like process it. And it was just so much hassle. And I, I have so many people in my family like to hunt. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll let them do that. I'll go fishing. I'll do whatever. <laughs> That's funny. No, it's good. It's a good point. Hey, if you don't like to do that stuff, you shouldn't, you shouldn't hunt. Hey, um, what's your, what's then what's next on your, if you're not, because usually right now archers are kind of getting ready for hunting season. Um, mm -hmm. But what's next on your agenda? Well, um, I'm kind of, I've taken a break from archery. I guess it's only been two weeks. I've taken a break since the world championships, but I'm um, kind of trying to reevaluate what I want to do next. Cause I don't actually know all that much. Um, I want to kind of step back and have more fun with it. Cause it seems like for the past little while I haven't, I've been very serious about it. So I want to go to like collegiate stuff. Cause that always looks really fun. And the stuff my friends are going to, and then I'll get back into it, the swing of things, but it's important to have fun with it too. <laughs> You're going to get in back in the swing of things before Lancaster though. Right. Oh yeah. Before oh, the yeah. classic. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So we'll see you at the classic. That'll be fun. Oh yeah. I'd never um, miss it. <laughs> so, so let's, let's go back. Let's start talk. Let's talk a little bit. If you don't mind, if you wouldn't mind uh, telling us about your experience in Italy, like the whole, why, why don't we do the whole thing? We've got time to talk about the whole thing. Tell us about okay. qualifications how you got ready, how you prepped for qualifications, how, how, what was the U S qualification like? And then, then what was that time in between? how did you train between that time between qualifications and then getting over to Italy? And then what was the tournament actually like? I'd love to hear your side of the story. Mm, yeah. Um, so prepping for qualifications, I did, it was hard this year because it was so early in the season. So it was for, it was during the, um, the ASA in London, which is like the third in the season, but the other two were during like finals. So I couldn't go to those. So I, um, I did more IBO this year, which was, I think a better prep for any, um, for worlds anyway, because it's unknown. Um, mainly it's unknown is the, the difference, but a lot of IBOs and I did as many local ASAs as I could. And then just shooting at home, uh, as much as I could as well with different people. It's always helpful. Not I, I had done more prep for the trials events in the past. I also tried out for um for the field worlds, which is in two weeks. Yep. And I made it, but they had the uh they cut the categories for um people that didn't have eight in their division. So the Barebo Junior female got cut. So I'm not gonna do that one anymore. But I put a lot of work into that, which was transferred over to 3D pretty good. Um honestly the field field prep was my main source of prep for, for, for 3d. Cause they are so applicable to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I guess. And then you the had the trials, tri then you yes. went to the trials, right? Yeah. Um, the actual trials, um, were very similar to just like how an ASA is run. It's like some sort of ASA USA archery hybrid. Cause you have the ASA judges yeah. and then the USA archery rules. So it's, it's very relaxed like an ASA is. So I, I don't know, having done the one in, in 2017 kind of helped me uh, relax a bit more because it's like, oh, this is an ASA with different yeah, people. It's old hat to you. It's, it's old hat to you in this nice <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's just a mindset. It's just a mindset. Sure. But uh, I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. I love the World Archery format. I wish we had more USA Archery tournaments like it because the, the two arrow format is – so different and i hadn't actually been able to shoot a tournament with two arrows and and the recovery well other than field um but the recovery from your first arrow to your second arrows is probably i think one of the most important parts of of the the world archery 3d like game mm -hmm. um so explain, that was ex really fun can you oh, explain sorry. that yeah explain that for people layman that we're you know some people who have never done that before what does that mean <laughs> Yeah. Um, so for normal ASAs and like IBOs, you shoot one arrow and it's kind of just, you do your best guess, you send it. And if it hits the center, good. But with the world archery, you do your best guess, you, you send it and, and then you can make corrections for your second shot. So it's really, really important that you make a good first shot so you can have something to like 
correct off of. If it's a bad shot and you miss high, is it because you flinched or is it because, you know, because you guessed wrong? But um, the the actual trials were probably the most valuable practice in in that situation or in that case for um, for worlds because that's the only chance we get to shoot two arrows in a tournament that's high pressure um, for three D is the trials. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. And um, and both arrows are scored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have to have a good shot the first one. You you can't get away with it. But you, typically you should be shooting a ten on the second arrow, right? You would imagine. That there's would, pressure there. Expect. Yes. Yeah, there's <laughs> pressure there. So there's like, if you shot an eight, you're like, okay, well, that could have been yardage. Let me fix it then. Okay. All right. All right. So, okay. So you, you, you do really well at trials, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get selected for the team and you get to shoot with like an amazing archer, like amazing female bare bow archers, right? Our U.S. Yes. Finest yes. in the world. And you're one of those. And so now you've got to wait how many weeks before you go to Italy? <clears throat> oh, goodness. That was June, June, early June. It doesn't matter. It was early June and then um, September, early, early September was the trial. So three months, four months. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you're three yeah. months. So during those three months, was your brother helping you out at all to get ready or prepping? Or oh, yes. It? Okay, good. <laughs> So he was yeah. he was he a, he was he a tough guy? Was he tough on you? He he was. Uh, I I shoot more with my my dad shoots like trad. He he works a lot, so he just kind of shoots whenever he wants to. But he shoots trad, and we would do like little competitions where he would stand a little bit closer, and then I would stand back, and we we shoot up against each other, and he'd try to yell at me in his fake Italian and <laughs> <laughs> fake Italian. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that would have been hilarious um <laughs> okay so you're getting ready your family's helping you out you've got a great support yeah. system and obviously they're they're fitting the bill so thanks very much mom and dad for mm -hmm. putting some money into you and, and getting you over to italy uh did they come with you yeah my parents both came with me this is their 30th anniversary so they kind of had a double they dropped me off in the morning go do whatever come pick me up and then they'd take me wherever like they thought was coolest so they had their like double archery anniversary trip <laughs> that's good i mean that's good yeah. that's exactly my 20th anniversary we're, we're going over to italy in uh oh, cool. in three weeks yeah oh um, exciting so i'm taking yeah I'm taking the wife over it's it's awesome i think i love italy i, I lived over there for a little while um okay. so yeah i'm excited to get back and and see some stuff and i was excited to see you guys over there having so much fun and all the pictures that everyone posted makoa she's like had five thousand pictures that she posted so i was like <laughs> able to i was able to follow along with you guys thank god she likes likes taking pictures and stuff so that was really she cool. was like the the photographer of the weekend she has picture i mean that's the only reason i have photos from the event <laughs> yeah and chris is just she's fantastic too she's a good she's awesome yeah she's great the whole team's really great except for ken ken kind of sucks but <laughs> I'm kidding. I, Ken's on the show next, yep. next after right after you. I know. He's coming on the show. Uh, <laughs> I said, hey, Ken, do you want to come on the show? I, I, like, hey, man, you got to get on the show. He's like, dude, I'm boring. I don't know why anyone wants to. <laughs> Is that about like, Ken okay. Rhinas or um, Ken yeah, Jordan? Yeah, right. No, Rhinas. I've already had Jordan on. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Ken Jordan's already been on. Um, they're all good. They're all good. You guys are all great. People, yeah. Man. Um, okay. So, where was I? Okay, okay. Let, let's talk about the tournament. So the pressures mm -hmm. of the tournament. Okay, it's day one. No, no. You you get there. How early do you get there? Do you get there a few days before or? Well, we try to get there three days in advance. Um, Lufthansa. I don't know if you're familiar. Lufth They're like Lufthansa. the German airline. Lufthansa. Yes. Yeah. Um, they had a major strike the day that we were trying to get over, and then they prolonged the strike to the day after we were trying to get over. So Delta took care of us they were we they got us over there so we, were, we got there on practice day which was not planned but it worked out fine um and i mean that's why you try to get there early though just in case something like that happens yeah yeah <laughs> were you stressed did you think oh my oh, god yeah. you're not going to be able to get there they're going to lose my do you do you only have one bow did you only take i only one have bow? one yeah <laughs> that's scary did you it was is. it carry on did you have to take it and carry on or take it and carry on so we had to to check it which is a whole nother hassle because um 
it, I have a rifle case and the language barrier, they did not realize I don't have a rifle <laughs> in my rifle case. So it, we had to be escorted by the police. And I'm like, it's going to be a miracle if my bow shows up in Italy. And it did. So it was a miracle. <laughs> that's, good. that's good. You need to get one of them Hoyt cases. Hoyt needs to send you one of those cases over, you know, <laughs> the, um, I don't know, the backpacks or whatever. Um, okay. So you get there, you're a little nervous. Uh, mm -hmm. you are on the practice range, right? You get out to the practice range. Did you, did you have a place to stay? Like, were you staying with your parents? Did you stay with someone, share a room with someone or? Um, you know, Robbie Weisinger, we stayed yeah. with, with him. Um, and Tracy Francis, uh, she shoots trad. We had a house, um, on the countryside. It was super cool. And we actually had a hay bale there so we could, we could shoot at the hay bale. So that was, that was fun too. <laughs> That's And good. cause the practice range, the way they ran it was you had, they gave you one minute lines and you, it was like an AB line. <laughs> so you could only have one minute to shoot your arrows. It's really hard to, you know, correct bows or anything that got messed up in the airport in a minute. So it was really important to have uh, practice at home too. That was lucky. That that actually we is a great. That's a great point. Okay, so so that that was that. I'm getting some insight here now. All right, and then so you got your bow. You tune your bow. You've got it ready. You think you, you're feeling comfortable. You're like, hey, this is not Italy. This is just you know North Carolina. This is <laughs> this is it's the same. It's identical. The weather looks the same. The <laughs> exactly. it's all same same weather. It's whatever. People are talking weird language. It doesn't matter. They talk weird in the <laughs> anyway. So, um, so anyway, you get out there, it is, um, it's the first day of the competition, right? What time mm -hmm. did you get, what time did you kick off? What time did you start? 10, 15. So it was nice. Cause I mean, back home, we normally start at eight. So it, we yeah. got sleep in a bit. So yeah, 10, 15 was the start every day. All right. So you got 10, 15 and did they do a shotgun start sort of thing or did, was it, did you get sent out to um, different different targets they had like this weird waiting area between the ranges where you would like gather on your stake and like meet the people that you were with and then like the same with u.s air troop field you just follow your judge out they have like signs yep and then at a certain time they start and keep on going okay each target has a judge no um i think there's like there's like five ranges and like three judges per range so you see one every now and again all right and then okay so then you your first day are you nervous? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. It was awful. This was, this is my fourth world. And it was like, I, I used to say, Oh, the first one's the hardest, but I have to change. And like the, the fourth is the hardest now, <laughs> hopefully not the fifth. Um, but I was, it was crazy. I had not experienced nerve like that in uh, like ever with archery. It was, it was intense, but this, it never, it never you never get used to it <laughs> so how'd you fight through it um i i learned at a tournament this past summer that i just need to eat as much as i can to like help that adrenaline like dissipate so i i packed like five sandwiches and i tried to eat as many sandwiches as i could <laughs> that is that's some really high level good good i mean you don't want to be over bloated on the range either no. like oh my god this, i gotta find uh a loo around here somewhere um uh, but yeah no that's that's pretty good that's good that's good that you realize that in yourself and you go hey i'm self-aware if i eat i can control the adrenaline rush it's interesting interesting i'm sure it's not you're not drinking coffee in the morning no goodness <laughs> no no and i was talking i was talking that well I, I think i saw alex melnick's interview or something yeah. like that and alex was saying um that he purposely didn't drink any coffee yeah. and so he's usually a coffee drinker so um and he's like yeah i can't we couldn't do that but that's kind yeah, of i good. normally I do coffee yeah. i normally do coffee as well just um but it, i can't like my heart rate starts going crazy and if i have like any sort of excess caffeine in my system you can <laughs> i can feel it like tenfold so i'm sure i, I was feeling that way without coffee I can't imagine the other. <laughs> so you get on the range. It's day one. You get on out to your target, whatever your target number was, um, and then you um, you meet who? Who was? It? So were you were you paired up with 
any Americans or Canadians or English speakers? Um, they normally, they do it so that no one from the same country is on the same target, um, or they try to if it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, so no Americans, but there was, everybody over in Europe seems to speak at least some English, so it's not not too stressful with the, with the languages, with the archers, so that was fine. Okay, and then, uh, you, and then you actually, you proceeded to clean up a little bit. I mean, honestly, I mean, finishing like eighth overall out of a, a pretty big field, what was it, like 30? Is it 30 or something like that? I, I made a point not to look at the scores and I never went back and did after the tournament was over. So I don't really know. <laughs> I looked at them. I think it was like 30. I think it was around 30. Okay. But anyway, so it's, it's, it, it was pretty good top 10 um, finish, you know, and especially then. So I, I heard the course was super, super easy. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Tell, go um, ahead. Tell, tell me I'm wrong. It wasn't the the most difficult, like I'd ever been on, um, but it, it really was very seems... close. It was very close. <laughs> yeah, I heard it from, from everyone I talked to. Everyone, even the champions, they're saying brutal, brutal course. It was, it was hard because the the sand was so rocky. So normally you can like kick up a flat spot um, for your feet, but there there's so so many rocks. You just had to stand on the rocks and just like yeah, your toes are going every which way, but. You just had to do with everybody had the same conditions, but it was not fun. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so, what made it the the most difficult? What it, what it made it that difficult? Was it was it just the uneven surface, or was it the target size, distance? What? Um, we were kind of expecting from previous events that the targets would be small, so that that wasn't too surprising. Um, uh, it was still difficult than being small, but just it wasn't it was anticipated um the hills were were rough and and the specifically you had to walk like up and down so many hills to get where you're going that we we shot on some hills but the the walking you just got to a target and you're like, i'm exhausted <laughs> so i don't know that was that was hard because you never you never caught a break <laughs> yeah you have to recalibrate but yeah you you pull through and i guess that's why you're you know um on the u.s team because you're supposed to like they expect you to pull through and and uh, perform under adverse conditions, which you did. Again, you did. You did a fantastic job. Amazing, 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 amazing shooting. Um, and especially sh so showing so much maturity for your age, right? I mean, I know 19 is not young, but it's still pretty good. I mean, like it's pretty young for, you know, we, you got Fawn Gerard on the team as an example, right? And she's got years of experience on you. And um, she did fantastic too, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Who was the Who was the other bare bow person on? Um, Sydney Phipps, and oh, she's Cindy. nineteen as well, yeah. um, from West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. So Cindy was there too. So, um, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, okay, give me give me some advice. Give me I, the sandwich thing was pretty good. Give like <laughs> give some new archers. So my 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 listeners love to hear new advice, something that they can grab and go. I'm going to try this and I'm going to be like, I'm going to be U S uh, archery team uh, quality. Like what, what can they do? Hmm. Some, some funky things I do. Um, the sandwich thing, honestly, that has been, that's a recent discovery for me. And that has been a game changer, but um, we've been tying a lot of like the, the, like, you know, the um, McKenzie Delta, like deer core with the rope on it. Yep. We tie that up in like a tree limb. And uh, we don't live in a super hilly area, but we make artificial hills oh, out of shit, trees. Oh, that's a great idea. There's your advice. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's fantastic. So you got to shoot up. So you got to shoot up because you're not. Yeah. In, okay. No, that's so cool. Delta McKenzie. Okay. That well, that's a trick. That's a nice training training tip. That's actually a really good one. It's probably one of the best ones I've had on the show. <laughs> so, everybody, that that's really cool. Um, okay. I, I missed one piece though. I want to go back really quick. I, we're we're getting at time here, but I want to take me through your shot process. And so if you you never you have a coach, like you have people who are helping you coach, and you have your brother. Mm -hmm. and obviously, um, you know your brother must be going through some uh, NTS type training or something like that. But um, tell me how you what your shot process looks like and feels like. Um. Well. It's so hard to like I'm sure you can relate to this. It's hard to describe because so much of it is subconscious at this point. But um I I load up my shot and um 
I, I use, I have target, I had target panic. It was terrible. So I, I make a very specific like point not to aim while I'm drawing. Cause I think there, that would be a terrible path for me to fall down again. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I pull back the bow and I hold it on my face. And then I, I just tell myself, you know, keep holding it, keep holding it, keep holding it. And then eventually it's, it's just gone. And uh, it kind of melts through my fingers and I release it subconsciously somehow. And I know it's not very helpful. <laughs> I don't know if you have any like actual specific questions about it. I might be able to do better with that. I will. I will ask you <laughs> some specific. I'll do, I got follow up questions. <laughs> All right. So you go up to a target, three D target, yes. right? Okay. What's the first thing you do? So you're walking up that trail. You're out of breath. You're in Italy. You know, someone's saying, you know, let's get going. And then so it's you're you're up. Um, you go up to the stake, right? Then what? Yes. Then what happens? What What are you doing? Um, like, what's going on? Got to figure out how far away the target is first. Um, and how do you? I do, do the yeah. I'll do the uh, like the the ten meter or ten. I do everything in meters, but um, the ten meter like thing that everyone does, where they look and see like, oh, where's ten meters in front of me? Where's ten meters in front of that? And you kind of walk your way out to the target. Sometimes I'll do that if I'm in a pinch, but most of the time, I'll just look at the target and from indoor, I'm pretty familiar with how far away 20 is and I'm like okay that looks like it's five farther than an indoor target so I'll just add it to whatever it's uh it just takes practice <laughs> a yeah. lot of practice yeah that's good okay so yeah so now you get the range <clears throat> all mm -hmm. right let's say let's say the you've got a um a little frog at about 20 28 28 meters away <laughs> yeah now what's the next <laughs> what's the next thing you do what is the next thing you do yeah, you're 28 I meters. I try to like. Okay. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, um, I try to like block out of my mind that there's a small target out there because it doesn't matter how small it is. The spot's the same size. Just try to forget that you're aiming it like a, a flea and uh, just focus on the center. And, and then I'll, I'll pull up and then go through my, my shot process. Or I just, I, I make a point to stare specifically at the center and like don't let my eyes stray from it. I don't even really worry about where my, my arrow point falls whenever I'm at full draw, just look at the center and it, it ends up in the right spot. Most of the time it's kind of a, I don't know, instinctive string walking hybrid thing that I don't know. <laughs> do you, do you string walk? So you're string. I do string walk. Yeah. Okay. And then, so do you have like a, do you have a short, medium, long? Or how do, um, how, do you do, how do you do your string? Walk? I have one for every five yards, um, but my my bow is very fast because I'm pretty bad at distance estimation. So I, I have a fast bow to make up for that. Um, so it it kind of is a relief to me that no, if I make a, I just have to make a good shot. It doesn't matter really what tick mark I use; it's going to hit it. Yeah. Um, that's a that's always a, a relief for my brain. It helps me relax more. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a good point. The, the faster, the flatter the bow, the better. Are you holding, mm -hmm. like, how much are you holding on your fingers? Um, I want to say it's it's 40 on my fingers. Yeah. Wow, that's really good. That's amazing. That's, 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 uh, that's, men hold like 40, 41, 42, right? Or something like that. And you're using that indoor and outdoor. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's okay. It's all good. I want to get a better indoor setup, but uh, I'm, I'm not good with setting up bows, and this one works, so I'm not messing with it. So no. I, I have plans for that this indoor season. <laughs> you can always call. You can always call Dwayne, or you can always yes. call uh, you know Calvin. I'm sure they would be more than happy to help you set up for an indoor. <laughs> yes. And you, Dwayne's always going to tell you you need dragon flight veins, and uh, and of course you, you shoot their bow. Uh, so. <laughs> So you're like the te you're like Team CD, so yeah. <laughs> they they should be helping you. They should be calling you all the time. I have bugged them if they they watch this video. I know Calvin watches them. He's gonna watch it because you're a CD person, um, <laughs> CD archery uh, shooter. So uh, he better contact you and say, hey, this is what you need for this is what you need to beat Aaron. <laughs> it's all about beating Aaron this year at Lancaster. <laughs> That's the, that's the gotta goal. Go after I'm sure they'd be willing to help me, but I just um, <laughs> haven't asked. That's probably the main problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know. You sound like a, a very um, humble, uh, 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 re real professional archer, <laughs> you know, and, and seem very humble for how good you are, which I love. I love that about uh, trad archery. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. 
uh, you know, thank you very much for being on the show. It, it was amazing having you. Uh, it's great to talk to someone who's on the uh, U.S. Uh, team. Just fantastic. Thank you very, very much for being here. Uh, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks. If you got this far, thanks for, for listening and watching. Uh, don't forget to follow Laura. I think it's uh, Laura Hughes Archery on Instagram. That's Is it. that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go give her a follow. And and uh, <laughs> and thanks very much uh, Don't to my sponsor, archerypass.com. Great archery products for trad archers if you want to check them out. And um, hunt the good stuff. We'll talk to you soon. See you later.